Following our previous analysis of noise across assets, today I turn my attention to how noise has an impact across different trading timeframes. And you might be in for a little bit of a surprise. Maybe you should be prepared to have some of your preconceptions challenged. Stay tuned. Have you ever heard anyone say you shouldn't trust anything you read or hear, and you should always test theories out for yourself? My personal view is that this is especially the case with trading, as I believe there are many preconceptions out there that simply don't have any firm grounding. And because of this, this is the way I always operate, and I'd encourage you to do the same. Don't even take anything that I say as being authoritative. Test everything out for yourself. And today I cover what I believe to be one of those common misconceptions or generalizations that you often hear in relation to noise and timeframes. And I think you might find the results surprising. So let's take a look. So moving on now from the analysis that we've performed around different assets using both price density and the efficiency ratio, we look at a similar investigation, but across timeframes. And this time I'm going to start off by looking at the efficiency ratio. Now, the underlying analysis used the same 42 assets that we used previously, but those noise levels for each of the assets has been averaged out so that we're now able to look at the effect of noise across a range of different timeframes. And again, using 20 periods for the efficiency ratio, this is what we get. And certainly the results I've got here seem to contradict the generalization that noise simply increases as you go down the timeframes. That doesn't appear to be the case. But before we look at this in more detail, let's just remind ourselves about the interpretation of the efficiency ratio. So higher values represent high efficiency and so low noise, as you can see here. And then low values mean low efficiency and high noise. And so as we look at the first four time frames here, which are the one minute, five minute, 15 minute and one hour charts, the generalization that noise decreases as the time frame increases seems to hold. But look at what happens then for the four hour time frame and the daily. Here, noise appears to increase. Now, this might be for one of a couple of reasons. The first is that noise does genuinely increase. So, in other words, those short-term fluctuations compared to the meaningful move within a certain period of time gets larger. The second possibility is that this is just an anomaly in the way that this indicator operates. And at this stage, we're not in any position to be able to decide which of those it is. But if you take a look at the red trend line here, which is a line of best fit, at least this does agree with the generalization that markets become more efficient as that time frame increases. And again, the implications of this to us as traders is that these higher time frames are therefore likely to be more suited to momentum based trend following strategies, whereas the lower time frames might be more effective when using mean reversion strategies. But this is where the big surprise comes in. When we start to do the same analysis, but this time using price density, this is what we see. And remember, price density is interpreted in the opposite way to the efficiency ratio because of the way that the calculation works. Here, high values represent high levels of noise. So on the face of it, this is telling us that those higher time frames experience higher levels of noise, which is completely the opposite of what the generalized view of noise and time frames is. So these are the time frames representing higher levels of noise and lower levels here. So given that this does seem to go against conventional thinking, does that mean that we shouldn't be using the price density indicator and instead should use the efficiency ratio? Well, let's just hold off a little before we make any decisions. Because just like I alluded to previously, 
we should test things out. We shouldn't just assume that what the wider community is saying is fact. Instead, let's base our decisions on the factual information that we determine ourselves from our own research. Now, there's a few things we can do to help us to come to those kinds of decisions, which I'm going to be doing in future episodes. But firstly, we're looking here at average noise values across all of those assets. Let's now just take a look at how this compares when we look at individual assets. So moving back to the efficiency ratio, this is what it looks like for gold. And so here, broadly speaking, this fits in with conventional thinking. Higher time frames producing more efficient price action, and the lower time frames with less efficient price action. And let's compare this to what price density says. And in this particular case, price density appears to be a little bit more erratic in its measurements of noise than the efficiency ratio. And then for Aussie dollar, we see what might be some more surprising results. So again, price density going against convention. And here the Kaufman efficiency ratio tends to be a little bit more erratic. But overall, given what we've seen, does this mean that the efficiency ratio tends to be better than price density at measuring noise? Well, as I've suggested, not necessarily. Who's to say that price density isn't giving us a truer picture? So now we need to move on to the next stage. And this is putting both price density and the efficiency ratio to the test. And this is the topic that I'll be covering in the next few episodes. And I'll be looking directly at how the use of these two indicators either improves or otherwise our trading strategies. And I'll be using the concepts of asset filtering and time frame filtering in order to do that. Now, if that next episode is already available, you'll find a link to it top right now. If not, then please remember to subscribe to the Darwin X channel and you'll get notified when that episode and future ones become available. Now, until next time, trade safe.